Hello my friends and welcome to my video about ancient coins of the Greeks and Greek areas really controlled by the Romans that are rather affordable and could be considered relatively cheap to buy on eBay. But the only problem that most people might have is that they don't know which coins exist. So with over 45 different examples, this uh, entire collection is available for sale inside my store. I basically picked out a bunch of different coins that are under $100 and many are under even $50 and some are as low as about $20. So consider this, imagine uh, being able to own, own a whole tray of coins, uh, two trays of almost of coins for almost less than a thousand dollars if you considered if they were all cost that low but obviously you should click on the links and see how low you can find certain coins plus I accept offers so you might be able to do so let's get started okay so this first coin is from the Greek city of Abdera in Thrace it features Apollo in a square and the griffin the griffin was a mythical creature of protection of an area, and below it is uh, oftentimes the magistrate's name. The magistrate is pretty much the official of the city. So this coin is from circa 345 BC. So I have some of these coins as low as even $20, but it's rather interesting. This is, I obviously picked out some of the higher quality examples, but you'll be, you'll be able to see a lot of stuff like this. Next, let's check out this coin of I Guy in Aeolus. Aeolus was a territory in what is now modern Greece. On the front you have Hermes wearing his special hat, uh, the Pitassos, and on the back is the goat. Both were important symbolisms for the city. The goat may have had to do either with Hermes or maybe Dionysus even. So this coin is from circa 2nd to 1st centuries BC. Very interesting coin. Next, I'm going through very quick. A lot of these uh, coins, when you click on their picture of these uh, exact coins, is going to do a search in my store, so you're going to be see, seeing a lot more different examples. So here's uh, just a few examples of Alexander the Great coins. One of the types Alexander the Great struck had a shield on it. The shield had various designs. This one features the Gorgon. The Gorgon is a Medusa-like creature, so that's kind of interesting. And on the back is the Macedonian helmet, which would be recognized by the ancient Greek peoples as he conquered many, many territories. So this coin was from circa 323 to even 315 BC. Next. Let's check out this type. This type is a very popular type. It features uh, Alexander the Great wearing the lion's skin headdress, exactly like Hercules. You can see also this type of depiction of Alexander wearing the lion's skin headdress, even hundreds of years later on the coins of coin on of Macedonia. I may be able to show you one later, but you might want to check out other videos for that. So we have Alexander as Hercules in the front, and we have the bow and the club, which were emblematic symbols of Hercules too because he carried around the club and the bow uh, was another weapon of his. And the lion skin headdress comes from the Nemean lion. He basically skinned this Nemean lion, which had impenetrable skin and he wore the skin as armor. So basically he's a helmeted guy. Um, so we have this interesting coin from circa 325 to 310 BC. Next. Some people really love the lifetime issued coins of Alexander the Great. Not all of the coins bearing his name and also are attributed to Alexander the Great because they have his name and uh, motifs on them are during his lifetime. His lifetime was rather short as uh, a king and, and an emperor of a rather vast empire. So this specific coin was struck 336 to 323 BC and it features Apollo. This is a very, very popular motif on ancient coins and the, the prancing horse right. So this is a very interesting coins of, coin of Alexander the Great. There are also other various different types, but just uh, when you click on uh, one of these pictures, you're going to be able to look through the entire selection. Next, let's check out this coin. This coin is from Amisos in Pontus. So this coin was struck during the time of Mithridates the Great. Mithridates the Great was an enemy or a foe of um, 
the Romans. He would kill Roman citizens, and for a long time, uh, he created a really large Pontic kingdom around the Black Sea area. A lot of the coins, uh, a lot of the cities, such as this one that he uh, conquered, had the the different motifs. This one specifically having Perseus on it. Perseus is the one that uh, cut the head off the Medusa, um, you know, in mythology of the ancient times. And on the back is the Pegasus, very interesting coin. So we're talking about circa 105 BC. Next, I have a lot of these coins, Amphipolis. Amphipolis is an ancient town in Macedonia. What's cool about Amphipolis is that all, it was at first owned by Athens and later conquered by Alexander the Great's father, Philip II. So not until um, we, we could see the Amphipolis coins bearing the name of Amphipolis, you can see Amphipoliton, that's the name of the city, that's how you could tell which city it's from. Uh, it basically was struck later after the freedom of the Greeks by Flaminius in 196 BC. So this coin is from circa 146 to 31 BC. So second to first century AD. So we have Poseidon, the god of uh, the ocean, and on the back we have the horse. Uh, Poseidon is believed to have actually been the one who uh, created the horse. Next. Antigonus to Ganatas. Very interesting coin. So Antigonus, uh, he won a uh, Victory in Gaul, and uh, this coin features Athena and Pan. Pan is believed to have helped them achieve this victory, and uh, therefore, Pan over here is on the left, standing right, crowning a trophy. And on the front, we have Athena, so the goddess of wisdom, and this coin is from circa 274 to 239 BC. So, we're talking about a very interesting coin, and this coin can be owned very affordably, and most people don't even know that it exists. So, by clicking on the actual picture of the coin, you'll be able to see it in my store, and see other examples in various different price ranges. Usually ancient coins, the higher condition quality they are, the more they're worth. Uh, but, but it also depends on the rarity too sometimes. So, when you have condition and rarity, uh, the people value them more, uh, because of their aesthetic beauty. So here we have this coin of Antiochus II, and it features Apollo and the tripod. Apollo was the god of the sun, the sister to the moon goddess Artemis slash Diana, and uh, he was also a god of healing and a lot of other things. They, they had a lot of different things too, uh, that they were proud for. And in the back is the tripod. The tripod is a specific sacrificial tripod. They would uh, burn in different offerings of, uh, you know, uh, different spices and such uh, that on top of it. And on the bottom you have the anchor. anchor. The anchor was a symbol of the Seleucid realm. The Seleucids had controlled the vast empire and one of the things that they did was they also had a lot of ocean power. So that's a good way to propagandize the, uh, the power of the ocean that they controlled. Next, we have another um, coin of Antiochus III. Antiochus III, Megas, Megas means the great, so Antiochus III, the great. And uh, on the front we have Apollo, and on the back it's Apollo leaning on a tripod. Notice the uh, similarity in motifs, but this is a later king, obviously. Antiochus III being after the second. Next, you might ask, what is an Augustus coin doing inside a Greek, affordable Greek coins video? Um, because uh, the Romans, they wound up controlling the territories later after um, and taxing them and using the people to uh, find the various, uh, to get more soldiers, to get supplies, to get taxes and things like this. So some of the Greek cities that were striking coins in ancient times, such as Amphipolis, you see the ancient coin from over a hundred years ago, wound up striking coins with the names of the portraits. But the benefit of these coins is that they actually struck the motifs of the local deities. So on this coin you have Artemis Torpolis. Artemis, uh, being the sister of Apollo, as I mentioned earlier, she's riding the horse, so she has the different epithet. Artemis actually had a lot of different epithets, so she basically could be the moon goddess, she could be uh, the you know the hunting goddess, the virgin goddess, the protector, and a whole uh, slew of other different um, uh, you know this job descriptions she could have. So we have this coin of Augustus which is kind of interesting from the city of Amphipolis. Next, this is a very popular type. This coin is, uh, everybody loves getting this one. This is the Augustus at Victory over Brutus. So, 
When Augustus achieved victory over Brutus and Cassius in Philippi, Philippi is the is the city that um, you know this coin was uh, struck in. He wound up settling his um, you know veteran troops there, giving them land, giving them grants of land, and obviously there was probably lots of local women and. Um, they were happy to marry them. So on the front you have the Victory, which is the goddess of victory. She's holding the wreath and the palm, and on the left side it says Vic of, so Victory of Augustus. And on the back you have the military standards uh, being in honor of the troops or the legionaries that were settled in that city. So this is a very popular type. Philippi, I actually have ancient coins from Philippi that are a little bit earlier. They were named after actually Alexander Great's father, Philip II, and those coins were struck circa 300, uh, let's say 30 BC. Next, uh, we have Augustus. Augustus, another Augustus, where basically this coin, notice the motif where there's uh, basically two priests, or they could also be called colonists, uh, plowing right with oxen. Oxen are pretty much bulls that were used in agriculture. And the amount of, um, they use these bulls to uh, demarcate the area or the distance in and around the town because they would lay down square blocks. So this coin it has a beautiful portrait of Augustus, AVG for Augustus in the back, and you have this scene, this very important foundation scene. So very interesting type. So we're talking about three different types of, of Augustus coins. Actually, you could get below a hundred dollars or below even fifty dollars so you actually might be in great luck next Carthage uh, can you believe that you could actually buy affordable coins of ancient city of Carthage this is another popular type so you have on the back the horse and uh, prancing right and you have on the front Tanit their local goddess they had a temple in their you know in the city of Carthage and they would uh, dedicate sacrifices to her and such and the such so we're talking about a 400 BC ancient Greek coin for less than a hundred bucks why can these coins be affordable that you might you might be asking well because think about it like this the ancient Greeks and the ancient Romans, they struck millions of coins to facilitate their economy. So if you think about the amount of also silver and gold coins they struck, they need a change. So how would you have a change for um, a silver coin? What they first would do is they would strike these really, really tiny baby coins that wound up actually getting lost and very easily lost. So um, that's, that's one of the reasons, for example, the really tiny coins of Athens, the silver ones, they're so much more rare than these larger denominations. You would think uh, the, they're rare and more valuable. How come there's a lot more silver in this coin? But you're not buying these coins for the silver, you're buying them for their rarity and their beauty. So in this situation, um, you know, I picked out the most beautiful examples of such, but they're, you know, these aren't going to win a beauty contest, but they really represent about the quality of coins that you, you could actually get rather affordably. So. Yeah, there, there's definitely a lot of ancient Greek bronzes, but it, it also doesn't mean that the metal, like if you have a really beautiful bronze coin, it could be worth just as much as a silver coin or, or probably not as much as a gold coin, but it, it could still be rather valuable if it's in a nice condition because this is art captured in miniature. Uh, each coin is not just a coin. These were hand struck. So imagine how many irregularities the different coins would have. You know, imagine some guy hammering at something. Uh, you know, centering is an issue. Uh, the designer of the of the coin is an issue too. But moving on, uh, he, we have another Macedonian king. Uh, you know, after Alexander the Great, he was a Macedonian himself. Uh, this uh, this coin features the Macedonian shield, which would be widely recognized in the ancient times. And it features the monogram of Demetrius Polyorchetes. Demetrius Polyorchetes is definitely a very interesting figure in history. And he's, I, I believe, responsible for the siege of Rhodes that wound up uh, being... Um, um, stemming or becoming turning into the great wind for for Rhodes to build the great Colossus of Rhodes, which was one of the seven wonders of the world. So you, you should thank this guy. So we have the shield and the helmet, very similar motif to the more um, more older coin of Alexander the Great. See, they, they're, they're like copying and similar motifs with the Gorgon. Next, Elia and Iolus. This coin features Demeter, which was the goddess of agriculture, and on the back is 
uh, torch, which was one of her symbols. So, very interesting type, and sort of second to first centuries BC. By the way, you could read exactly what time period they're from. You know, I'm one of the few dealers out there that provides such detail on their tag, including, you know, the Greek lettering that uh, may be visible or may not be, but that, that, that was there at least at some point. And uh, on this coin, we have Ephesus. Ephesus is one of the important cities, especially for those people that like collecting coins of biblical times. Uh, St. Paul the Apostle visited Ephesus, and it's modern day uh, town of Izmir in Turkey. So on the front you have a female head possibly of Artemis because Ephesus had this great temple to Artemis of Ephesus or she's also known by the Romans as Diana of Ar Ephesus because that's what the Romans called Artemis in their language. So next and over here we have the bee. The very popular symbol of Ephesus is the B. So the big silver coins are probably a lot, <laughs> are a bunch more expensive than this one, but this one could be found rather affordably. So that's kind of interesting. This coin is quite scarce, or you could say sometimes rare even, of the city of Hermacapilia. So I mean, perhaps one of the reasons that sometimes uh, people don't have such a variety of the ancient coins is that it there's a wide learning curve to learning about ancient coins. It took me, uh, you know, I've been learning about ancient coins for over 15 years now and, you know, working with them. So, um, you know, it really helps to have uh, have all this information and leverage my experience. That's, that's, what, you're, that's what you're actually benefiting from. So. Over here, we have the symbol of the Roman Senate on the front. This is the Roman Senate. And on the back, you have the turreted head of Roma, which is the personification of Roma. You see the head dress she wears. It's almost like for the symbolism of the city walls of Rome. So that's kind of interesting too. Next, Cassander. Now, this is uh, one of those guys that was really power hungry. Uh, he um, killed uh, Alexander the Great's infant son who was destined for the throne and he uh, by being a regent for him he wound up uh, seizing control and even um, causing the death of Alexander the Great's mother so um, yeah so Cassander but this is a very actually very popular type and rather interesting and you see it's directly right after his death so see Macedonian King circa 319 to 297 and this one and um, you see Alexander the Great just died three four years earlier um, he also, but what's interesting is that this guy married Alexander the Great's sister, and he founded a city called Thessalonica. Thessalonica could be seen uh, coins here, um, so that's named for Alexander the Great's either sister or half sister. So that's kind of interesting. Moving on to this coin, Cronon in Sicily. Uh, I have a whole, a whole video about horses on coins, so this kind of interesting horseman. And in the back is a Hydria. I believe this is a water vessel. It's an, on these big wheels. I don't know why they decided to do that design, but it's you know different from other ones. And these cities really wanted to promote their own towns. So that's one of the reasons they put the different motifs on their coins. That um, a lot of times they're related to the cults and deities. Uh, temples that they built in their cities so people from all around would travel and visit these temples and this would bring a lot of money that's one of the reasons why St. Paul uh, was chased out of Ephesus is because he came there and said hey uh, you know believe in Jesus and that these all these trinkets of these various different gods and goddesses uh, aren't gonna buy you an afterlife this is a, this is all garbage but these guys that were selling, making a lot of money selling these um, different idols uh, they chased them out of town. The, the the stadium there actually still exists, so you might still be able to visit it. It could fit a whole like about twenty thousand people. Next, Kime, very interesting, to, very interesting town. It loved to put horses on the coins. Their symbol is the KY Kime. Okay, so this is the fourth part of the horse and the vase. So the the horse and the vase, also the eagle, is are the three different symbols that are from that coin. This coin is from circa 350 BC. How incredible, actually, to hold this history in your hands. Next, 
This coin is just one of the few, one of the few issues that were struck uh, later by the city of Larissa for the Thessalian League. The Thessalian League is basically a confederation of the various different towns in an area called Thessaly, which is um, in Greece. So this coin is from circa the 2nd century to 1st century BC, featuring Athena and the horse walking right. There are several different types like this, but and also Larissa in Thessaly struck coins a little bit uh, earlier before it became the main mint for the Thessalian League. So that's kind of interesting to collect too. So there's several types there to collect. Lysimachia, basically like this. You know, so, some ancient coins, well, you know, why are they also so inexpensive that most people don't even know they exist? And B, the people that are selling them, they don't present the context and the historical information that people have. So, uh, sometimes it's a long learning curve, learning all the different types. So, this coin, Lysimachia, it's a town in Thrace that Lysimachus, who was one of the Alexander the Great's generals, and who inherited a part of the empire that wound up getting split up between various generals of his. Uh, one of them being, uh, you know, the empire in Egypt called the Ptolemaic Kingdom. Uh, there was an area called the Seleucid Kingdom. There was also the Kingdom of Thrace, which Lysimachus, um, you know, was the king of. And then there was also Macedonia, which was the original kingdom where Alexander the Great heralded from. So, um, Lysimachus was one of the Diadochi, and this is this was his main mint to strike coins. But this is the, the this town actually struck coins in the name of the city, Lysimacheion. That's the city name, instead of Lysima, you know, Lysimachus, uh, which which this coin features. So this is a coin of Lys Lysimachus, um, and um, his coins are kind of interesting. Is that sometimes they feature the portrait of Alexander the Great, um, and this coin has the wreath. And it has his, uh, the name, his name in the wreath. Next, Maranea coins. These are beauties, actually. What I like about them is that they are about Dionysus. Dionysus is the god of wine. They would have these amazing uh, parties. Uh, you know, the word symposium, I believe, is actually a Greek drinking party. So, hey, I'm going to a symposium. It sounds like really smart, but hey, it doesn't sound as smart as saying, hey, I'm just going to go get drunk with my buddies in this uh, convention. So, <laughs> this is kind of interesting. So, Dionysus is the god of wine. In the back, he's standing left, holding the wine grapes, the symbol for the wine and to the right of him is the name of the town that's how you can actually tell what the ancient Greek coins towns were and he's also holding the I believe the Thyrsos which was this little stick with um, um, some sort of acorn or on top or something um, next there's another coin of Marinia a lot of these coins so had this coin with the horse and this little square with all these different bunches of wine grapes with the Greek city name around, Maroneton. See, Maroneton. Uh, next, Mesembria. Mesembria in Thrace. Very interesting town. Uh, there's a couple different types with these coins. One it features the female head and the Athena hurling a spear. And the other types are actually have the helmet, the, the helmet and the wheel symbol on the back. Very interesting types, so there's several types to collect from there. Now, Odessa's and Thrace, another Thracian coin. So, what I basically do is I write the city name first and then the town afterwards. I find this is easier for me because uh, I organize them by the city names rather than just by the area and also um, understood better. So instead of saying Attica, Attica, Athens, I would say, you know, Athens and Attica. So this coin actually features a great god, Derzelus. They had a local deity called Derzelus on the, on, on the, in this town. And, um, you know, you see you have this portrait and uh, you have Heros, the great writer god of Odessa. On the back, on the bottom, is the Odessa's name. Very interesting coin. Can you believe this is how interesting to hold these, um, you know, historical pieces of coins, like, in your hands? I'm still amazed to this day. And this is another type. So, you have this one type of Odessa and another type that are most prevalent from that town. And this coin, we have the feature of the youth right. Some people write him as Apollo. And on the back is the great god Derzelus reclining. 
and below him is the name of the town. So moving on to the next coin, Oiniaidai. Oiniaidai is very interesting because it features Zeus and this um, Greek um, river god Archelaus and he was basically a bearded river deity and for some reason uh, the river deities of the ancient Greeks they were kinda like half man half bull so basically imagine a bull with a man's face so it's a very interesting symbolism and this is another town that a lot of people don't know about but some people that do uh, so what I'm doing here with this video is I'm actually cutting the learning curve for you much more quicker so how do you learn about ancient coins you actually own them look at them uh, you know look at the pictures read the histories and it all in the end after a while starts connecting dots in your mind and picture and paints a better map of the stuff Olympus of the Chalkidian League you know, you have the Apollo, and you have the Kithara or Lyre of Apollo. A Kithara is a type of a Lyre. A Kithara is a four-string Lyre, while the Lyre is a generalized term for this type of instrument. So this is kind of interesting, and you have a 432 BC Greek coin. I believe Alexander the Great's father conquered these guys. Um, next, Pella in Macedonia. Pella was the capital city of the Macedonian Kingdom. On this coin you see Athena, the goddess of wisdom, and on the back you have the horse grazing. Uh, very nice, and you have the name of the city around. And this is a rather beautiful coin from circa 158 BC. Very interesting to know. Pergamon. Pergamon was an ancient kingdom that was after the Greeks that wound up taking the cash I believe from this guy, Demetrius Polyorchetes, or this guy's father, or maybe the father of Antigonus. But anyways, long story short, they took this bunch of cash and founded the, the uh, kingdom of Pergamon. Pergamon, and it was a very wealthy and flourishing kingdom that wound up actually getting um, given to the Romans after the passing of the last ruler of it. And these guys were wealthy beyond imagination. And uh, this town is in the museum. And um, we see Athena on the front. And you have the trophy on the back. What is a trophy? A trophy is basically after you capture people's arms, after you defeat them in battle, you take, uh, you take the arms and you put them on a stick like a, almost like a, and create a scarecrow with the arms on it. The Romans actually would display, um, you know, arms from victorious battles of their ancestors in their foyer when you entered their homes. So this is kind of an interesting symbolism on this coin. And uh, around it says Athena, the victory bringer. Athena's Nikaphoroi. That, that's, that's what I believe this translates to. We have the Athena on the front. There's a lot of various different types of this. It's a very popular type. And uh, some one of the coins that they have actually has uh, Asclepius on them. Uh, you know, th this video would get too, way too long if I showed a lot more types. But by c actually clicking on the picture of this coin, you're going to be able to actually see all the coins from Pergamon and see all the different various types. Um, Perhaps each one deserves its own video too. So Perseus. Perseus, you could say, was considered the last king of Macedonia, the kingdom of Macedonia. He, uh, I believe, rebelled against the Romans and got defeated. There was one last guy called um, Philip VI Andriscus uh, that uh, basically has maybe one portrait coin. But you could say officially this guy is the last king. But yeah, but he's still interesting. So. It is considered that the Kingdom of Macedonia, I believe, was founded by Perseus himself. And um, interesting how the last king was also Perseus too. His father also used the symbol of um, Perseus on, the f on, on his coins too. It's basically a similar motif, but the, but the symbols to the left and to the right and different monograms would be different. ER, this is the symbol for Perseus. So we're talking about a 179 to 168 BC coin. Very interesting coin. There's also rare R2, I believe, um, rare type. Next, Philadelphia and Lydia. Philadelphia, what does Philadelphia mean? Ph Philadelphia pretty much means the city of brotherly love. And what's interesting about this coin 
is that it has a Macedonian shield. Perhaps it has something to do with the conquering armies of Alexander the Great that passed through there at one point uh, on their way to you know, conquer a vast empire that stretched all the way to northern India and would have gotten larger if Alexander the Great didn't die in Babylon in 323 BC. So you have the Macedonian shield on the front and you have the thunderbolt. The thunderbolt is a symbol of Zeus. And on, on e either side of the, uh, the thunderbolt, you have the name of the city. That's how you could tell. Philadelphia. Most people don't write this stuff and, and they don't provide the tags. So what's nice about these tags is that you actually know what you have the co uh, with the coin, even if you don't have any other paperwork for it. So, next. How about this coin of Philip II? Philip II was Alexander the Great's father. How did Alexander the Great become such a great victorious general? Well, he learned from his father. His father was in captivity in ancient Thebes and learned military strategy from them. And he wound up reforming the military in ancient Macedonia, giving them extra long spikes, giving them advantage in a battlefield, and um, grooming a lot of um, military commanders including Alexander the Great who actually fought beside his father conquering these various different towns in ancient Greece. So this coin features Apollo and the horseman. So what's interesting about this coin specifically is that it refers to Philip II's Olympic Games victory. He won an Olympic Games victory in a horse racing event. Actually, he won a couple victories. So he commemorated the victory in all, on pretty much all his coins, including the ones in the bronze, silver, and even gold. So this is an interesting coin over here, Philip II, and it is very affordable. I recommend getting yourself one of these. So I recommend maybe getting one of each of these. This is a great, um, you know, learning guide to the to to this area. So Philip the second, Philip the fifth, the Philip the fifth. Notice these are all in alphabetical order, by the way. I provided it like this so that it would be easier to work with later. And you could also download the article below this video uh, and print it out and use it almost as a. Um, checklist and you could also download it and the PDF allows you to click on the links and from there you could visit the website because if you lose my website you could still have the PDF saved on your desktop or in your my documents folder on your computer I don't know where it is in Mac but anyways moving on so Philip the fifth was the guy before the last guy see Perseus uh, 179 to 168 and this guy was before him so 221 to 179 BC at one point they had a co-rulership so there are certain coins that are attributed to both rulers at the same time and what's nice about this coin we have Hercules um, and the name of the king Basileus pretty much means King Philip is a you know King Philip basically and you have the Harpa the Harpa is what this guy used basically as a sword to cut off the Medusa's head and you have the wreath of success around. The wreath was also used as a symbol by the Romans too to signify their status in the town. They would put it, put it above their doors. Oh, what do you know? We have a coin of Philippi. So uh, the town that Philip II created, so you could actually tell, see uh, 359 to 336 BC and this coin was struck 357 to um, 330. So he becomes king goes, um, makes his town, either conquers it or renames it after himself, um, or builds it, and this coin features Hercules and the tripod, and the town's name, Philippoi, to Philippon to the right. A very interesting type. Next, let's move on to Sardis and Lydia. Sardis and Lydia was the capital of even the Lydian kingdom, I believe, and um, it had a, such a numerous, a numerous coinage. And here are the two most common types that are illustrated there, but are still fun to collect. This coin features Hercules and Apollo holding what I believe is a raven on the back inside a wreath with the, with the city name to the right. So you have a beautiful depiction of uh, Hercules and Apollo. So what I believe is that this coin and then the next coin, next coin I showed you are two different denominations of the bronze coinage that they have. I believe this was the full sized coin and this was like the half denomination. So perhaps maybe two of these equaled one of these, these guys. But this one has Apollo on the front and the club of Hercules, the weapons that uh, Hercules carried around and clubbed people and um, did stuff with on the back. So notice both symbols, both deities are honored on this coin. One featured Hercules, the other one featured um, Apollo on the front. 
So, moving on to the next coin. So the Seleucid Kingdom of Seleucus Perrin, first in the Qatar. Uh, this guy was, um, this coin features the Medusa. Um, that's kind of interesting on the front. It almost looks like the Versace symbol. Next, CD and Pamphylia, this video is almost over. Um, another town that you might want to read about. Moving on to Syracuse. This city was one of the most important cities in ancient Sicily. And it struck this coin with Poseidon and Poseidon's trident on the back. There were a lot of other various um, coins that were struck by the town in various different metals. Very popular type and uh, some of them could be rather affordable. It really depends on the condition. Next, Temnos. Uh, this is an ancient town, little known about it. But it features the, the bearded Dionysus. Sometimes he's bearded and sometimes he's not. So there's actually two different various types of it. But, um, you know, they just usually show the bearded. This one I think is bearded. And this one has the grape bunch for Dionysus. Uh, and next coin, Thessalonica. Alexander the Great Sister. You have another head of Dionysus and the goat. See, I told you the goat may have been the symbol of Dionysus, and on either side is the name of um, the city. Uh, next, Diatera. Very interesting town. And I think, uh, you know, in the ocean by it, it there was uh, found the Thyatera mechanism. There was, uh, there's a whole mystery thing about it that uh, thousands of years ago, the ancient Greeks created almost uh, like a watch-like style computer to uh, map the constellations moving in the sky, so some, some crazy stuff like that. You might want to look it up on YouTube, but uh, this is kind of interesting. So Thyatira and Lydia. So Lydia is an area. So the Sardis was also in Lydia too. Uh, and the last guy, we have Tiberius, um, the founding of the city of Parium in Mysia. So you have the foundation seen by the Romans. And you have the portrait of Tiberius. Very important also historically uh, to the Christian peoples as he was the guy during the trial and crucifixion of Jesus Christ. So, you've just watched this entire video. There's a lot to take in. So, you just click the, click the link below uh, to see the article to this video. Or visit my site trustedcoins.com and sign up to my email list. Do it now before you forget. So this way you could get a, a lot more videos like this um, and uh, a lot more articles sent right, right to your email. Uh, so looking forward to dealing with you guys soon. Have a fantastic day and I hope you enjoyed this video. So I trust you had fun actually watching the video. As much fun as I had presenting these interesting, wonderful pieces of history to you. So now that you've watched the video, I recommend visiting my site trustedcoins.com and signing up to my free email update list that I mentioned is free. Uh, but basically it's uh, videos like this and also uh, links to my eBay store. This way it will be easy to learn a lot more about this interesting topic for, with the convenience of time. So when you're dealing with me, you're actually leveraging over, you, would, you could say 15 years of experience working with over 62,000 ancient coins and artifacts. So visit my site, sign up to my email list, and perhaps uh, even browse my coins because of my site, Trusted Coins. I have a big red letters, visit my store. That's kind of interesting. Also, the article linked below or inside the little, uh, I, little icon on your YouTube video can take you to the actual article I, I wrote with the pictures of these coins in the descriptions so you could actually see them without me moving around and adding extra commentary to it. So what my goal is, is to make this um, field more interesting and more fun so that a lot more people could enjoy this great hobby, which was actually considered a very aristocratic hobby just a few years ago. But with the 21st century modern technology, we could actually take it to the next level and keep these beautiful pieces of history for preserved for generations to come because that is the best way i believe to uh, to preserve history is through private collections such as this and with such a wide variety of ancient coins available on various different topics see my different articles you could actually see that this is a very very fulfilling subject to work with and then i mentioned fun all right guys 
I'm looking forward to dealing with you guys soon. Send me some comments. Maybe you want you want me to make another video about some other types of coins that I have. Explain the different types. I'd love to. Just send me some uh, maybe an email or comments on this uh, YouTube site. So, looking forward to dealing with you guys soon and have a great day.